you'd like to see it, just shoot me a message in the chat and I'm happy to share that. Uh, so today, what we're going to be talking about is some of the ways that the publishers we work with at our hometown are using automation to increase their audience revenue and engagement. So we're going to talk about a lot of different things. I've got uh, quite a bit to cover, so I'm just going to get started with it right away. But uh, just really quick introduction. My name is Matt Larson. I'm the president and CEO of our hometown. And uh, just for a little bit of background <clears throat> on us so that you know where we're coming from with all this, we work with uh, exclusively newspaper websites and we work with hundreds of them across North America. We manage their websites. We do it all on WordPress and we also host native apps that are connected with the website. So everything is updated in one shot. Um, again, this is a WordPress based platform that we're using and it's been customized for newspaper publishers. So right out of the box, you have a working website with all the features that you need to monetize your content. We are a family business founded in upstate New York in 1997, and our number one priority has always been customer support. And I think that is most clearly reflected in our main offering, which is our PDF to HTML conversion service, so for the past 24 years, we've really been in the automation business, and we've been helping local community newspapers automatically publish their print content online. Uh, technically, it's not fully automated. We do have people involved in the process, but from the publisher's perspective, it, it is automated. And the other thing uh, about you know being so tuned into the customer support and customer feedback is that the WordPress platform is constantly evolving and the feature set that we can offer is constantly growing based on publisher feedback. And that's a benefit of using WordPress, which is an open source uh, content management system. So I'm going to say this will probably take 30 to 45 minutes, depending on the number of questions we get. And in that time, we will discuss auto renewing subscriptions, newsletter marketing, some of the opportunities there for automating that. Social media marketing, this is something that we all kind of recognize that we need to be doing, but it's you know a big time sink, so how can we automate some of those things? Automated audio content, this is probably what I'm going to spend uh, the most time on this topic uh, because it's also related to this process that we have for turning our, our customers' newspaper websites into podcasts. We turn the text articles into podcasts on the website. And so it's a way for people to get into podcasting in an automated way. So those are the topics we'll be going through. Kevin, you already gave me some feedback. I appreciate that. But if everyone else on the call could locate the chat box, uh, you might have to open it up in the Zoom control panel. But I'd really love to hear uh, more about you all. And if you could tell me uh, the name of your paper and maybe the circulation or um, you know the, the monthly page views that you get on your website. I'd just love to hear uh, a little bit more about uh, the size of the operations that you guys all have because you know we normally work with small community newspapers, oftentimes mom and pop shops. And that's why we're so focused on automation because you know we're all expected to do so much with such little time. It seems like every year there's more expectations put on newspaper publishers, you know, more platforms or more social networks that they need to publish on. And it's just, it's getting to be, well, it's, it's been too much for a long time. And so that is why we're so focused on automating processes wherever possible. So first topic, auto renewing digital subscriptions. This right here is an example of the subscribe page from a publisher we work with in North Dakota, the journal trib.com. And I think she's got a really nice model here. Uh, it kind of blends the traditional newspaper model of charging annually, but she also has this month to month subscription that auto renews. And that is the key. Uh, you've got to offer auto renewing. So that's my first question for the audience. How many of you offer auto renewing subscriptions on your website? It doesn't have to be month to month. If it's annual or, you know, every six months, just do you have the ability to have your subscriptions auto renew? Um, because as far as we can tell, and I think, you know, you all can kind of relate to this uh, personally, just in the services that you use month to month with auto renew with auto renewal is the norm for accessing digital content. It is 
it's kind of unusual to not offer that these days. You know, if you look at the big digital content providers that are leading, uh, you know, the, this space, uh, I mean, specifically like video, uh, like Netflix, HBO, you know, they all have that model where you sign up. Actually, the, the model for them is usually you sign up for the first month for free and then it auto renews at the full price. But that auto renew is key. And, you know, they've kind of paved the way for us on that. So we can just, you know, take advantage of it and offer it to our readers. The uh, first step is just to set up a merchant account. So, you know, it, in order to do this, you would need some type of a merchant account like Stripe, PayPal, or Authorize.net. And again, I just think it's key to consider the Netflix model, which is to either offer that first month discounted or free. It doesn't really matter what the first month is. You know, that's almost like a write-off. You know, it's just the cost of acquiring the customer. So you could go as little as free, but it requires them to put in the valid credit card. You know, then, you know, they've got something, they've given you something. And, you know, it is true that they could cancel at the end of that first month. You know, if we can deliver value to them in that first month and, you know, convince them to stay and then continue to deliver value week after week, month after month, then they will let that charge just continue to run on their card. So, you know, the idea then is that when they sign up also it, it, with the way our what sites are set up, we would get them on a newsletter list and, you know, that's how we kind of reinforce the value of the subscription. I'll talk about that more in a minute. But the thing about these auto renewing uh, subscriptions is you can cancel at any time. It's not like you have to jump through a bunch of hoops to cancel. You know, you would just go into the account and you can just take your credit card off. And that is important. You know, we don't want to make it difficult for them to cancel. But the way I look at it is the default should be auto renew rather than having the default require them to continually put in their credit card to uh, stay a customer. So this segues nicely into newsletter marketing. And I look at this in four phases and each phase has, you know, more and more benefits to it. But with phase one, uh, well, before we get into this, I'd be interested in any feedback. Does anyone have a newsletter that they're sending out regularly to their subscribers because that would be phase one sending a regular website update to your paying digital subscribers again this reinforces the value of the subscription so when they see that credit card bill every month you know they they recognize you know what i read several articles each week and it's because of the newsletter they don't necessarily make that connection but that's the fact uh and you know they're just going to be continue to be a happy customer if they can continue to to read stories. But you know we've all had this experience where you sign up for something that auto renews and you kind of forget about it, and then a couple of months go by and you realize you haven't used it in three months, and then you immediately cancel just because you're annoyed. So we want to avoid that situation. So there's a lot of different services you can use for this. Uh, Third-party systems like MailChimp or Constant Contact are great solutions, and uh, usually they will integrate uh, through an RSS feed. Ideally, you would have something that's integrated into the actual website itself, uh, you know, so that there's you know not multiple accounts to manage. And that's what we do for our customers. The newsletter plugin is built right into WordPress. Uh, now, phase two is to widen that funnel. You know, we've got our customers and we want to hold on to those customers, but they're at the bottom of the funnel. You know, they've already given us the credit card and they're active subscribers. But for us to grow the subscriber base, we suggest offering a free newsletter sign up. This allows for maximum reach of your newsletter. You know, people will sign up for the newsletter just to see those headlines in their inbox. And maybe that's all that they use. Uh, maybe they're clicking on a couple of those links each week. They come to your website and they may hit the hard paywall if that's the approach that you've got. Or if you've got a metered paywall, maybe they're just using one or two uh, articles a week and kind of stretching that metered allotment out. But either way, they're coming to the website, they're engaged. And this is a way to build a list of leads. This is the way I look at it. These are all highly qualified leads. If they have given us an email in this day and age, it's like everyone's been burned by so many email lists. And, uh, you know, they've probably spent a lot of time unsubscribing to stuff. So if someone is willing to give you their email in exchange for you know, this, this service, this free newsletter that isn't really given away 
any more than, uh, you know, the, the typical uh, person come to the website would get, you know, they, they don't get any more by signing up for the newsletter. They just get the reminder every week. Uh, you know, they're, they're clearly very interested in our products. So this is a list of leads that we're building. And then with phase three, you know, we want to, well, first of all, automate that process of sending the regular newsletters to the paying digital subscribers. So this is like your, your next phase, um, constant contact MailChimp. They, both offer automated options. So you can build a template and th with the RSS feed populating it. But like I said earlier, it's better if you can have an integrated solution with the website. And with uh, the WordPress plugins we use, they do auto populate the templates. And then phase four, this is using the automation to grow the subscriber base through that lead list, you know, that signed up for the free newsletter. So uh, again, automate the sending of news updates and promotional offers to non-paying newsletter subscribers. So first of all, you want to automate everything that you can. And like I said in the beginning, we, we all are short on time. So all these approaches and all these marketing tools should be automated if possible. But it's nice if you can also offer some type of an automated coupon insertion. And uh, you know, a lot of our customers for a while were doing this manually, which is uh, better than not doing it at all. And what they would do is take their newsletter list and basically export it as a CSV and then segment it and compare it to the list of their subscribers because they need an email to purchase a uh, you know, paid subscription. So they could figure out, okay, these people on our newsletter list are paid. These are not. So let's separate them and send them two different emails. And let's put a coupon at the top of the email for the people that are, are just free newsletter subscribers. Uh, but again, ideally, all of that can be automated. And we have built the tools into our newsletter plugin so that it will automatically identify and tag the newsletter subscribers that are not paying, and it will only send those emails a coupon for a discounted uh, subscription. Okay, stop me at any time if you have questions. I'm monitoring the chat area. Let me see. I, I'm not really monitoring the Q&A, but um, I can do that. So I, I have a separate window for that in case you want to drop your questions in there. Now, social media marketing. The fact is that we really do need to reach this audience. I, I, I don't know the exact numbers, but you know, I think Facebook and all the social media platforms have significantly grown their traffic over the past year with everyone staying at home and socializing through their platforms. And so we just kind of need to accept this, but it, that it needs to be done. We need to put our links out there to get the traffic and, and the, you know, the people that are on Facebook to visit the website. But you know, how you do it, there's several different ways you can approach it. You can hire a freelancer, you know, a lot of people, just kids right out of college or even high school, you know, could probably do this stuff because they're so familiar with the social media tools. But um, you could also add it to the list of the editorial tasks, you know, for your editorial team. Um, or you could do it as a bulk scheduling process. Uh, I, I guess you could have the freelancer or, you know, your uh, editors do this. And, and that would definitely be ideal rather than doing it one post at a time as, as it goes out. So a couple of options for this. Some of you may be familiar with these services. Hootsuite is a great tool for bulk scheduling. So you could have Let's say you, you publish all your stories on the website on Sunday, then you can schedule them all in one shot to, to go out over the course of the week. And, you know, that way you have traffic coming in from Facebook every day rather than a spike in traffic, uh, you know, a couple of days a week when you um, post everything at once. You, you can uh, kind of embargo it and uh, spread it out over the week. A buffer is another service that does the same thing. And then Facebook scheduler, you don't even really need those services for Facebook, you could use just the built in scheduler tool. But ideally, we would just be able to automatically post it from the website, right? I mean, this seems like it should be possible. Uh, all these platforms have the APIs uh, published and readily available. They definitely want you to publish as much as you can on their platform. So they do make it easy. And it's just a matter of getting the, uh, the connection. So that's what uh, is possible with this WordPress plugin. And this is not a proprietary plugin. If anyone on the call uh, 
has a WordPress website, you could use this plugin yourself. It's called blog to social. Uh, and we've taken that plugin and, uh, you know, enhanced it and, and added some features to it. You know, the out of the box plugin does everything that we have seen so far. It does the scheduling and it automatically posts all the articles as they go up on the website. So you don't even need to do the bulk scheduling process. You don't need to hire a freelancer. It's just going to go out uh, as you publish uh, on, on the website, which is really, you know, it makes sense. It's the most timely way to do it, you know, rather than uh, scheduling it out over the course of the week. So this would replace Hootsuite and all those scheduling services. And it is available on WordPress uh, as a plugin that you can purchase. And it would come with the WordPress platform uh, if you uh, were interested in using our hometown system. Okay, now we're doing good on time. I wanted to save time for this last one here. So automated podcasting, uh, what we're going to talk about is this feature called audio articles. I'm going to get to this in a kind of roundabout way, but I'm going to just tell you where we're going first, and then I want to give you more background. This is a tool that we've developed to automatically turn your newspaper website into a podcast. And I want to give a little more background on this one because... All the other features we talked about, you know, and the automation opportunities there are probably a little bit, they kind of go without saying, you know, all, all those features you're probably doing already, or, you know, you offer those services like the newsletter, you, you have paywalls, so it makes sense why you would want to automate the sign up process uh, or the, the renewal process. Um, but with this, it's like, well, okay, I, I understand I should automate everything I can and, uh, you know, podcasting, that, that sounds good, but should I, why should I even get into podcasting? So I want to make that case for you quickly here. First of all, what is a podcast? Basically, when you boil it down, it's an audio program that you can subscribe to on your smartphone, very similar to talk radio, except it's on demand. So much more valuable than uh, traditional radio. And the content is presented as a playlist on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. Those are kind of like, if you were to really boil down the features of a podcast, that's how I would describe it. But why should you get into podcasting? Well, 60% of the U.S. population currently listens to online audio each week. And I like that metric because it it's you know kind of uh, on, uh, apples to apples comparing with our uh, the, the weekly papers that we mostly work with. So, you know, they're tuning into your print edition once a week, 60% of the U S tunes into audio each week, which is, you know, a figure that constantly is growing. Uh, and they saw significant growth last year, actually, despite the loss in commute times. And so the numbers there from January to April, 2020, there was a 20, 28% increase in, uh, l listen times, um, across the U S and from January to September, it continued to increase 51%. And the news genre actually has the highest impressions of all the categories. And so if you're at all interested in some more information on uh, this research, contact me, I'd be happy to send you uh, links to uh, Edison research and uh, the podcast trends report where I got this data. Okay, but from the adver advertiser perspective, here's the opportunity. Why, why should we get into podcasting? Well, it now represents 19% of digital audio buys. So, you know, looking at the whole audio space, it's growing or steady. As we've seen since COVID, 64% of advertisers are spending more or the same in podcasts. And 78% of respondents, these are the people that are hosting podcasts, currently monetize their podcast content. And half of them are doing it through sponsorship or host read ads. And the other half, I believe, are doing um, more like ad network type things. But those are the higher end podcasts that really have a huge audience. It's tough to tap into that in my experience. So usually it's going to be through a host read ad. But from the publisher perspective, this is what we've been talking about the whole time. Uh, you know, we don't have time to do everything that could be done. And, you know, audio is just one more thing to add to that list. It's also very expensive to produce. It, I mean, both in terms of time, you know, the training involved, uh, the equipment that might need to be purchased to make it sound really nice. So, you know, it, and it also requires experience with audio recording and editing. So it's like a whole nother skill set that you would have to develop. Um, 
also, I think the biggest point here is that it could take a long time to grow a new audio audience that is large enough to monetize. So it's the type of thing that you really have to be patient with. And if you're going to put the resources into it, you know, it's tough to, to make that case, uh, you know, to manually produce the podcast. So, you know, we, I think with the growing audience there, it's clear that we need to be getting into podcasting. We need to be thinking about it to, to get access to that audience and get our brand out there. I don't believe that the solution is to go out there and manually produce a podcast. I have a handful of publishers I work with that do that. They are, you know, larger operations, but for the small mom and pop, the solution is really to automate the production of the audio content. And the way we're doing that with our customers is through audio articles, which automatically converts every article published on the website into a mini podcast and the way it's monetized is with audio ads that are inserted at the beginning of every audio article. Okay, so let's just take a quick look at an example here of the mini podcast I'm talking about. So I just want to be clear on this point. The player, as it appears here, and the, the way that uh, we're presenting the audio uh, in, in this example is only possible if you're using our hometown for your website. But stay tuned because we're going to talk about a way that you can get this feature on your website without changing anything about your CMS just through uh, by putting some embed code on your site. So uh, there's definitely a way that you can get access to this feature. This is a customer in uh, central Arizona, and I just want to play this example for you so you can hear the quality of the transcription. So what you see here, though, is uh, the, the format we have is basically a text ad at the top that usually matches the audio ad that will be read at the beginning of the story. And then uh, it's going to just read the article back to us. So let's take a look. OK, so as you can see, this is a very high quality transcription. It sounds realistic. It's super clear and easy to understand. So there's tons of reasons that we're hearing publishers, you know, their motivation for adding this. Sometimes it's just to increase the accessibility of the website, you know, maybe for uh, the visually impaired, this is a way for them to get the news easily. Uh, it's also just kind of a, a cool, you know, new thing to offer on your website to shake things up and get that audio ad in the beginning. Uh, as I'm going to explain in a minute, I think the real value is in the new audience that we can reach on the podcast channels. So let's get back on track here. Automated podcasting, that would be the next level. So audio articles on the website, you know, that's actually a feature that we've had for almost a year now. And we've had those players on the stories and they've been getting plays. The thing that we recently realized is the, the one of the main characteristics of a podcast is that it's in a playlist. And so that is what we, we were missing for a while. And this is what we can offer to anyone on the call, again, just with your current website through an RSS feed, as I'll describe in a minute, uh, we can turn your whole newspaper into a podcast. And so with the automated podcasting, we're arranging those individual audio articles into a playlist. And that has significantly increased the usage. Um, and then that playlist can be embedded on the website as well as syndicated across the most popular podcast apps, Apple, Google, and Spotify. And when you have this playlist presentation, it's cool because you can now, you kind of have a new uh, ad that you can create because you know the, the articles are going to be played back to back. So you could just publish a sponsored content article on your website. It would just like all the other articles, it would get turned into an audio episode and it would appear in the playlist. So now we can have those audio ads at the beginning of each story, but we can also have a longer form ad uh, that is really an article in the playlist. So kind of like the native uh, sponsorship idea. Okay, we got some examples on the next slide to review. So we uh, do a lot of, uh, you know, collaboration with the different associations and you know we work with editor and publisher a lot we ha actually have an upcoming webinar um, that i 
don't have uh, the date on right now. I think it's uh, it, June 24th. We're going to be talking about paywalls on free newspaper websites. It's a really interesting topic. But the, the most recent podcast we did with EMP and Mike Blinder, uh, the new publisher there, was on this feature. And so you can watch that interview on our website, ourhometown.com slash virtual conferences. In that session, we actually spoke with two publishers, and we presented two case studies. Uh, the first one was Guy Roginson, the executive editor of Signals AZ, which is the website that we looked at earlier. And he was the first to adopt the audio article technology and monetize it with an audio ad. So that was uh, you know, what we really highlighted in his case. Kristen Weaver is the publisher of a weekly uh, print newspaper in uh, Wilson County, the Wilson County News. And so they are kind of a, a perfect example. Signals AZ is actually a digital only publication, but Wilson County is a, a print newspaper that is selling their audio ads in packages with Facebook live sponsorship. So they're being very creative with it and they're selling these ad packages to, you know, the, the uh, advertisers that really want to be on the cutting edge and they understand the effectiveness of Facebook Live and you know the effectiveness of these audio ads because if someone hits play on an audio article, they're listening. <laughs> you know, they're gonna hear that audio ad. It's not like a display ad on the website. It's nothing like it. But, you know, those were pretty much uh, you know, I would you know basically a hundred percent blind to at this point. You know, people kind of tune out display ads, but if you're going to hit play on an article, then you're ready to listen to the story. You're going to hear that advertiser's message and it's going to stick. Um, and they were actually the first to automatically create a podcast for her newspaper and automatically upload those episodes to Spotify and Apple podcasts. So let's just take a look at these examples here. Um, Spotify uh, for, let's see, uh, any of you that aren't familiar with it, the interface basically looks like this. So Spotify is really investing a lot in podcasting. They're not just a music platform anymore. And so you can run uh, your, basically your podcast show through Spotify. People can follow it, which is the same as subscribing to it on Apple Podcasts. And again, the great thing about this is it's in this platform that they're already using for other things. Maybe they're listening to other podcasts or they use it for music and, you know, they can listen to your episodes back to back. And uh, the cool thing about this that I really like that's different from other podcasts, you know, most traditional podcasts are long form kind of interview format. So you've got like maybe 30 or 45 minutes of talking uh, to listen to. So, you know, it's not really indexed. You can't skip around very easily. The way we're doing it is each article is its own episode. So typically, uh, you know, th this is a, an unusually long episode, 13 minutes. Usually they're one to three minutes long. And it's great because you can just skip around and, you know, just listen to the stories that you're interested in. So the other area just to round that out is uh, Apple Podcasts. And you're, you're probably not going to come to this page to subscribe. You're going to do it on your smartphone. Like I said in the beginning, podcasts are exclusively listened to on smartphones, as far as I know. Uh, but this is the same kind of presentation of the playlist where you can skip around and just listen to specific stories. Uh, another thing that they're doing really well, I think, is cross-promoting the podcast with their print edition. So they print it put out this article. Let's look at the PDF page here where they, you know, really just presented themselves as a very innovative publication by getting into podcasts. They explained to their readers, what is the podcast a lot? I actually got a lot of my content and my ideas from this article, uh, as you saw earlier, just giving their readers some background on what is the podcast, trying to introduce them to this new format and, uh, you know, they just did a really great job cross promoting it with their print audience. So that's something that uh, I would definitely recommend if you're going to get into the audio space. Okay, now we're going to wrap it up here in probably about 10 or 15 minutes. So definitely get your questions in now. But I want to offer to everyone on the call, uh, an opportunity to try this out. Absolutely no obligation. As you can see at the bottom, we're offering a free 30-day trial to anyone on the call. All you got to do is go to that link that I dropped in the chat area, 
and you can sign up uh, for free. And then if you want to continue using it after 30 days, it's just $99 a month for virtually unlimited transcription. We do have a cap at a certain point, And, you know, then there is a, a, a tiered um, model after that. But uh, I'm not sure if we're talking to mostly weeklies today or, or dailies, but for a weekly newspaper, uh, this is definitely going to be uh, what you're looking at for your total cost. And the way it would work is with any CMS, you can just continue publishing your articles exactly as you are today. You don't have to change anything about your process. You just provide us the RSS feed and we will handle the automated conversion of those text articles into audio on our system. And then we'll feed them out to all the podcast channels. And here's the key point. We're going to feed it back to you as a playlist that you can embed on your homepage. And so let's take a look at a case study of that, uh, how to turn your newspaper into podcasts. The Sedalia Democrat is a daily newspaper in Sedalia, Missouri, and we don't handle their website. It's a, a different vendor, but we were able to launch this podcast and, and the playlist on their site this month. And so we're really excited about working with them. They're very enthusiastic. They've already sold some advertising on it. So they've paid for the feature and uh, it's already profitable. So without changing anything about their CMS, they can now offer their audience the option to listen to every article published on the website. The audio ad is actually for a local car de dealership and uh, it's automatically inserted at the beginning of every article as we already described. And uh, this program is working so well, they've already expanded it to their sister weekly paper, the Warrensburg uh, journal. So let's take a quick look at a live example here of the Sedalia Democrat. So here's the playlist, and you can put this anywhere on the site. You know, most uh, websites are going to have the option to insert embed code. And another way that you might be using uh, this, like embedded embedding things, is like with a YouTube video. When you embed a YouTube video, it's the exact same process as in embedding this playlist. So um, they've got a lot of police reports and crime reports. These are slightly longer episodes, and I actually think these get by far the most listens. But let's just listen to uh, how this uh, episode came out on uh, Sedalia Democrat. So that's the audio ad, and here's the article. Showed that Trump was stolen control substance. Uh oh, he's in trouble. Yeah. So, like I said, those. Uh, episodes really get a lot of clicks. And the cool thing about this system is you can measure everything about it. You can measure how many clicks each episode gets. So you can get a sense of, you know, what are the articles that people prefer to listen to, maybe rather than reading. So that is our case study. And those are the main opportunities that, you know, we're focused on for automation. We're always looking for, you know, more ideas, uh, just different things that, you know, publishers are doing that it just uh, are unnecessarily manual. And so we've got a lot more features coming kind of related to automation. And it's, it's kind of been the core uh, of our philosophy for a long time, as I mentioned earlier. But uh, I really just want to emphasize that we're definitely looking for publishers to try this out. You can sign up at that link again, or give me a call if you have questions about how this would work. But it's again, it's a totally non-invasive thing. Uh, wouldn't require any changes of code uh, on the website or you know anything about it at all. So um, thank you for this question here, and you're welcome, Kevin. Thanks for joining. Um, on average, how long does it take to turn a newspaper into a podcast? That's a great question. Thank you very much for that. So this is instant. It, it doesn't require any time. The second that the article is published on the website, it goes to our system. And we do the transcription. And that's the beauty of it because, you know, I, that that audio is created by a, a computer, just to be totally clear. This is not a service that we're doing manually where it goes into a queue and then we have a person read it. It's all automatically produced on our end, too. It's not just automated on, from your perspective. So um, that allows us to instantly turn around those articles. Great question. Okay, so we're, we're done with the content for today. I just want to give, uh, you know, a quick plug here for, um, you know, our hometown. Again, we work with hundreds of newspapers across the country. We do a lot of different things for them. But the most recent thing that we've gotten into is this uh, kind of 
over a, a monthly training series uh, with Kevin Slimp. So anyone that knows Kevin knows he's a great presenter and we have a partnership with him where all of our customers attend Kevin's sessions completely free. They usually cost about $70 per seat and it's an hour and a half of training on different Adobe products usually. And he also does some really interesting topics on things like how to pick up how to get people to pick up your paper, how to survey your audience and learn about, you know, what do they want in their paper? Phenomenal webinars. Uh, he, he's a great speaker and a great teacher. Um, now I want to offer this though, to everyone that's on the call, because, you know, technically our uh, relationship with Kevin is that our customers get access to the sessions, but you know, he's okay with us also inviting prospective customers. So anyone that's interested in working with us, even if it's just with the audio articles feature, you know, you would still be a customer of ours. So if you want to try out the, the free trial of audio articles, then I can get you a free ticket to Kevin's upcoming webinar uh, on basic InDesign, uh, which is on June 17th. And so, you know, you could have your staff attend that for free. Um, another thing, another way that we could potentially work together and would also qualify you for Kevin's series uh, as a prospective customer would be uh, if you were interested in a prototype of your paper on our platform uh, on WordPress. So if you're, if you are interested, you would just go to our hometown.com slash contact us, just fill out that form. You can upload a PDF of your paper uh, right through this form, or uh, you know, you could send it to us through WeTransfer, and we will use that PDF to rapidly turn around a, a prototype. We have a, a rapid prototyping process. Usually, it takes a couple days, but at most, it would take a week for us to give you a uh, example. Well, it's actually a fully functional website. It's a, it's a website that is ready to go live, but it would actually have your content on it. So, a lot of publishers like to see that before. You know, they uh, talk to us about possibly switching to our service. Okay. And so that's all that I've got for you today. And we're just about right on time. Uh, I've got about 15 minutes left. If we have any other questions, I can definitely hang around. Uh, I'm probably going to just uh, put myself on mute here until all our attendees uh, kind of trickle away. But um, if we have any questions, I'm definitely uh, more than happy to go back and discuss any of these features in more detail. But uh, I just want to thank everyone. Thank you, Erica, for organizing this as always. And uh, thank you to all the attendees that took the time to listen to us today. I, I really appreciate your attention. I know your time is valuable. So thank you so much for your, your time. Um, I will happily send anyone that wants to drop their email in the chat a, a link to this recording in case you want to share it with anyone else at your paper. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Matt, for your Thanks, presentation. Erica. We really appreciate it. And thank you, everyone who had attended this afternoon. Um, and if anyone has any questions, feel free to uh, put them in the chat box or any uh, Q&A for that. And uh, just a little reminder that um, at the end of this, you will receive a short survey. And if you could answer that for us. It really helps us a lot when planning future webinars. And um, at the end of the day, you'll receive a follow-up email with instructions on how to access this webinar, um, just in case you missed something or if you want to go back and review it again. Um, well, Matt, I do not see any further questions. So once again, Sounds thank good. you so much. And thank you, everyone who attended. And I hope everyone has a great rest of their day. Thanks a lot, Erica.